A parent graph is the graph of a relatively simple function. By transforming the parent graph in various ways, the graph can be translated, reflected, or otherwise changed. Algebra 2 trig is all about functions or relationships between x and y, including their inverses. It is very important that you memorize the general shape of each of these parent graphs. By doing this, we can better understand characteristics of the graph and the effects of its transformations. Take out your parent graph's resource page. Now we're going to fill in the domain, range, and increasing and decreasing intervals in interval notation. Domain represents the x's or the inputs, and range represents the y's or the outputs. Our first function is y equals x. Our domain, looking from the left to the right, all the way, all the way left, it continues toward negative infinity. So the least possible x value is negative infinity. All the way up to, well, this line does continue forever and ever as x approaches positive infinity. We will always put parentheses around infinity because you cannot include infinity. It's not a number, it's a concept or more of a direction. The range for y equals x is all the y values that are being used. So how low does this go? The least possible y value is all the way in the negative infinity direction. So negative infinity is where we start our range and it goes all the way up, 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 up and continues up to positive infinity. For increasing and decreasing intervals, we are always reading what the range is doing as the x's increase meaning as we look from the left to the right. Another key part of increasing and decreasing intervals is that we will always use parentheses. In some cases, it is okay to use brackets, but it's always okay to use parentheses for intervals of increasing and decreasing. We can always use parentheses. I like to always use parentheses so I don't get confused on when I can use it or when I can't. Remember, that does not apply to domain and range. Domain and range, you cannot always use parentheses. This function, y equals x, is increasing. So if I go to the furthest left x value, which I know to be negative infinity, now if I start to go from negative infinity to the right, to the right, to the right, what are the y's doing? They are steadily increasing all the way from negative infinity to infinity which means we are decreasing on no intervals. For y equals x squared, it might visually appear that we go from negative 2 to 2, but absolutely not. That's only what you see, but the arrows are telling you that it continues, and it will continue further and further to the left, further and further to the right. The domain for a parabola for an x squared function is from negative infinity all the way to infinity. The range values are all the y values that this graph covers. If we look below zero, none of these y values are being used in any of the ordered pairs that make up the points that create this parabola. Therefore, the least y value that is being used is zero, and the greatest y value is all the way up to infinity. Now let's talk about zero. Is zero actually a y value of an ordered pair on this graph? Yes, it is. Then we have to use a bracket to represent that zero is part of the range. For intervals of increasing and decreasing, we're going to look from the left to the right. I have a y value around 4. As the x's get larger, my y values are getting smaller, up until 0. So we are decreasing from negative infinity up until 0. Remember, for increasing and decreasing intervals only, we will always use parentheses. But after 0, as the x's increase, the y values also increase. Therefore, y equals x squared is increasing from 0 to infinity. Pause this video and try finding the intervals for domain range increasing and decreasing for y equals x cubed. And then press play to check. Even though these arrows may look like this is becoming more vertical, it does continue out and out and out just ever so slightly. So our domain is negative infinity to infinity and our range is also negative infinity to infinity. As we go from left to right, the y values continue to increase. 
Therefore, this is a continuously increasing function from negative infinity to infinity and has no intervals of decreasing. I want you to try y equals x to the fourth on your own as well because it's very similar to y equals x cubed, because it's very similar to y equals x squared. The domain of y equals square root x is, well, the x's seem to start at zero. So this is not a negative infinity to infinity domain. This one has the lowest, the least x value is zero, and the highest x value is infinity. Infinity always has parentheses, but this zero value, well, let's check. If I plug in zero for x, am I allowed to take the square root of zero? What is the square root of zero? The square root of zero is zero. Yes, you can square root zero, you just can't square root negative. Well, not yet. So zero is included in the domain of y equals square root x. If it's included, we put a bracket. The range of y equals square root x is the same as the domain. The lowest y value now that's being used is zero. As the x's increase, the y's will continue to also increase. And there's a hint for our increasing and decreasing intervals. We are increasing entirely from zero to infinity. Always parentheses on increasing and decreasing intervals just to make it easier. This graph continues to increase, therefore there are no intervals of decreasing. Time to try out y equals x to the fourth and y equals cube root x on your own. Then press play to check your answers. Even though it's going up ever so slightly, it still is going up toward infinity and down toward negative infinity for the range here. y equals x to the two-thirds and y equals absolute value x are also very similar to the characteristics of y equals x squared and y equals x to the fourth. So I want you to do those two on your own, but let's look at y equals one over x. For y equals one over x, there's one x value that this graph can never be. What is that x value? Hmm, well, we're not allowed to divide by zero. So guess what? x cannot be zero. Graphically, this can be represented by something called a vertical asymptote, which we'll be learning about more when we get to our chapter on rational functions. An asymptote is an imaginary line or fence that the graph does not cross. It does not cross the asymptote, but it will get really, really, really close and continue to approach it without ever actually touching it. Is it okay for me to put an x value of Point zero 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 one. Yeah, that is still a possible x value. I can do one divided by this number, even though it's super small and close to zero. So zero is the only x value that's not allowed. That means our domain goes from negative infinity up to zero, and it also includes zero up to infinity. For interval notation, we must break at zero and put parentheses to show that zero is not allowed as an x value, but every other number around zero is still allowed. The domain approaches zero, but does not use zero. There's also a y value that this function can never be. It can never result in zero. There's no value that when I take one and divide a number, I'm going to result in zero. This numerator has to be zero in order for the result to be zero. Therefore, we have another asymptote, which is a horizontal asymptote. Again, the graph is approaching, approaching, approaching zero, but never actually touching zero when it comes to the y values. So the range is the same as the domain for this rational function. As the x's increase, the y's are decreasing. So from negative infinity to zero, my y's are decreasing. But also from zero to infinity, the y's are increasing. So do I have to put this break or this union symbol in between? Can't I just go negative infinity to infinity? No, because any break in the domain means you're going to have to write it as a break in the increasing or decreasing intervals. 
this function has no increasing intervals. Now that you've done y equals 1 over x, I want you to try y equals 1 over x squared on your own. So we're going to jump right into the characteristics of a circle. This particular parent graph is not a function. If you remember from Algebra 1, it does not pass the vertical line test. The domain is entirely dependent on our radius. Radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. So if this is r, and this is equidistant from the center, which is at 0, this value is negative r. So my domain goes from negative r up to r. And guess what? That is included because this point is on the circle. So we put brackets. Same with the range. Every point on the circle is equidistant to the center. So if the center is at 0, then our lowest range value is the negative radius, and our highest range value is the positive version of the radius, both of which are included. Once we get to trigonometry, once we get to the trigonometry portion of Algebra 2 trig, we will work a lot with sine and cosine. Sine and cosine are both functions. They pass the vertical line test, but they have infinite increasing intervals and infinite decreasing intervals. There is a way to write that, but we're not worried about that right now. I just want you to know the domain and range of sine and cosine. The domain for both of these is negative infinity up to infinity. It keeps going forever in this direction and forever in this direction. I guess our graph needed some arrows. But the range does not go below negative 1 or above 1. Same for the parent graph of cosine. So our range is negative 1 to 1. These are included values. Here we have a point 0, 1, which is on the graph of cosine. So 1 is an included value. We'll put brackets around that. Pause the video and complete your responses for y equals x to the 2 thirds, y equals absolute value x, and y equals 1 over x squared. Then press play to check. And here are your answers.